with Homeschool Academy, and we are here once again to talk about homeschooling and education. And wanted to share with you a couple things that I learned over 30 years of homeschooling. I also wrote two master, or I have two master's degrees, one in human development and one in marriage and family therapy. My master's thesis was on why parents homeschool, and my lit review was on the history of education in America. So I bring a lot of experience to homeschooling, um, and I've blogged and taught and done classes and helped parents for years and years, done academic advising, all the things. And um, education is kind of my jam. <laughs> I love it. I think it's such an important vehicle that we can use to raise up our kids. Um, and so how you educate your kids does matter. I think it's so very important. But I wanted to share four things that I learned over 40 or 30 years of homeschooling. And the first one is, is that you as the parents are your kids' most valuable resource. Now, as parents, we're always I mean, a lot of us, honestly, let's face it, a lot of us are always reading the next book and trying to find out what the answer to the specific thing is that we're working on right now, whether it's a developmental task or stage, or we've got an issue or a challenge or a problem, and we're always looking for the next thing. But listen, parents, you're already bringing so much to the table with your kids. You literally are their best resource. One of the things I want you to start thinking about, especially as your kids get older into junior high and senior high, is... What hobbies and interests do you have that are personal to you that you can share with your kids? Because you already have a jump start on information and knowledge. And if you look at how the wealthy educated their kids or um, you know, legacy families and industries have raised their kids, they immerse their kids in what it is they've done. You see this with political families. You see this with industry-oriented families. You see this with educational families and pastor's families is that the kids can stand on the shoulders of their parents. So, okay, we live in the modern age, I get it, actually postmodern age, but so much of what you have to offer can benefit your kids right now because you have already amassed this body of knowledge and you can share that with them. So if you have an interest or a hobby or a particular area of study, um, share that with your kids. Invite them into your world, into your interests, into the things that are valuable to you. Chances are, They'll love it too, and even if they don't, they'll get actually just a broader understanding of the universe. One of the things we do in our career exploration class every year is that the kids actually have to do an exploratory study on what um, jobs people in their family have. And that is very informative because the kids start seeing patterns in their families. Um, in, in our family, oddly enough, we have and like just an, an odd number of psychologists and therapies, <laughs> therapists, um, not a couple, but handfuls of both and then pastors and teachers. And those all those, you know, those uh, career fields all kind of tie together. Um, they all have to do with social constructs and those kind of things. So do that for your own family. Just kind of see, like, what are the interests? Are you more a STEM focused family and more humanities focused family? Um, where are your areas of interest? And then again, invite your kids into those areas. You are your kids' most valuable resource. You can also use your resource abilities to help them um, network. If they have a particular area of interest that you don't really know anything about, find people in your network that can really work with your kids. This is a great way to help your kids go farther faster. Use the resources that you bring to bear and be a mentor and a resource person for your kids. And of course, I lost my handy dandy little notes here. Okay, the second thing is kids are naturally curious and inquisitive. Now, kids are more naturally curious and inquisitive when they don't have a lot of devices because devices interact with the brain in a different way. So really limit your kids' screen time. I think it's very informative to us that a lot of the big tech gurus do not let their kids play on devices or have cell phones until they are older teens, <laughs> maybe even young adults. <clears throat> and so we need to think about that. They know stuff that we don't. That's why they're billionaires. And, um, and so let's think about how many device, devices are we gonna allow our kids to have. But kids who are not um, fed a constant stream of device and technology um, information and input into their brain are generally naturally curious and inquisitive. So feed that curiosity, feed that inquisitiveness, give them books and opportunities and field trips, let them have the ability to explore, spend a lot of time outside. Green therapy is a real thing. Doctors um, and therapists prescribe green therapy. And what does that mean? It means go outside, just get outside, go out and explore. You can do the hundred hours um, or the thousand hours outside. There's really cool apps now where you can walk to Mordor and win little prizes or whatever. Um, super cool things to help you get outside. 
but i do want to just encourage you that your kids are naturally curious and inquisitive and if they get to a point where they're just not and they're you they don't have like hours of screen time and all of a sudden they're just not curious and they're not inquisitive and they don't care about learning honestly you might check this they could possibly be bored now that seems a little counterintuitive but here's the deal our brains are created to want new stimulation and to take in new information when we just have the same old thing that's why certain types of pedagogy where I'm just going to give one that is pretty well known. When you go over Henley one, year one, you do a third, year two, you do one and two thirds, and year three, you do one, two, and three thirds of the Henley one book. Your brain doesn't have new stuff to grapple with. So in my experience, because you do that three year two hour of Henley by the second and a half, maybe even third two hour, or maybe even earlier than that, they're just done. They don't care. They're not learning Latin. They're out because their brain doesn't have new material to grapple with and wrestle with. And, and so they're bored. So if your kid is not just like, excited about what's going on, check the boredom factory. They need challenge, not boredom factory, boredom factor. They do need challenge. So um, give them something to be challenged by. Give them a new teacher, give them harder stuff, um, find out what they wanna learn and really feed that interest. Um, number three, clear strategies lead to success. Now, I have worked with families from all over the world for over a decade doing academic advising with them as a homeschool consultant. Um, first with another company and then with True North Homeschool Academy. And one thing I have observed is that families with really clear strategies have kids who go on to get full ride scholarships. They go on to um, be Olympic athletes. They go on to do amazing things because their parents had a clear strategy. And I'm not advocating that you have a strategy to get your kids to the Olympic unless, Olympics, unless of course your kids have that aptitude and you have the resources to do that. But what I am saying is that if you have a clear strategy for success for your kids, academically, socially, emotionally, spiritually, their uh, ability to succeed is going to just skyrocket. I mean, you know, like if you help them create a path for success, they're probably going to be successful. So if you don't have a clear strategy for success for homeschooling, then you need to get one. <laughs> Find our personalized learning plan, get with our academic advisors, um, do a transcript template, understand a typical course of study, really like go after education. What does it mean to be a successful um, student? And what does that look like? And I'm not talking traditional, um, I, you know, I, I'm the out of the box alternative education uh, person here. So what I'm talking about is what does it mean for you and your family? What are you called to do and be? Um, and what does that look like as far as success? Because you might have a kid who success for them means going to an Ivy League. Success for them might mean getting a full right scholarship. Success for them might be starting a business when they're 14 and selling it when they're 18. Success is going to look different for all of us. So I'm not advocating one path towards success. I'm advocating that you have a path towards success. And if you're not sure what a path towards success looks like or what that means, send me a DM, <laughs> ask some questions, go on over to TrueNorthHomeschool.academy and start to chat with us. Real people answer those. Get on the Facebook groups that we have, Not That Hard to Homeschool, um, Homeschooling Looks Like Tribe, and ask questions. What does a path to success look like? And then what is it that we're going to own and that we're going to advocate for for our kids? Because if you have a clear path for success for your kids, chances are your kids will be successful. And that's going to be really helpful to them. Because there's a lot of voices right now and there's a lot of things coming at our kids. Um, college isn't an easy path anymore, even if you can afford it, even if they get a Fulbright scholarship. The question is, should they go? Just because you can do it, should you do it? Um, but if you don't do college, then what do you do? I mean, there's a lot of stuff that our kids have to wrestle with and grasp. Um, we're in the fourth industrial revolution. Things are really topsy-turvy. We're in a time of great societal disruption. So parents, you need to mentor your kids and help them create and plan a path toward success. What does that look like? What kind of lifestyle do they want to live as an adult? And then back into it and then create a path from there. Last but not least, interpersonal life and academic skills are all equally important. Now, you hear this all the time in the homeschool community, one of my pet peeves it's it's the it's the person not the textbook well duh I mean that is so self-evident it it's laughable but here's the thing that really gets me 
If your kid has a character thing, put the put the book away and just focus on the character. And I've said this before, listen, your kids can learn so much character through academics. I'm not talking about beating them over the head with it. I'm not talking about ignoring learning disabilities. I'm not talking about being a draconian homeschooler. What I'm saying is it's not either or, it's both and. And so if your kid is really struggling with academics, you probably need to get a different curriculum or they need placed in a better way, or you really need, depending on their age, you need to really kind of get some buy-in from them. There's a lot that goes into motivational psychology. The Goldilocks principle is just a really basic one. I have videos and YouTubes on this. You can go check them out on the, on the um, YouTube site and on Pinterest and all those kind of things, the, the blog. Um, but what I am saying is that your kids can learn a lot of character by doing academics. <laughs> this is a time-tested way of raising your kids, let me be honest. Um, and a lot of the wealthy people know this, um, and, and they can be very draconian. And I only refer to wealthy people because they have what we might look at as successful kids on many different levels. I'm not saying always, in every level, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's a point of reference, okay? So if, if you look at what people do that have been really successful, they, they honestly, they do private education, i.e. homeschooling. They get private tutors for those things that their kids have specific areas of interest or talent, or they can't do themselves, i.e. homeschooling. Um, and they really feed their interests and they push them, i.e. they have a strategy. Um, also, they do not say, hey, if you're having a breakdown or a crisis, we're going to just never do Latin again or we're never going to do math again because, you know, your crisis is so important that everything else is just going to make way for your crisis. What it is saying is if your kid has a crisis, figure out how to manage the crisis and figure out how to give your kids the executive and interpersonal um, tools that they need to manage their own crisis, to calm themselves down, to settle themselves down so that they can get the work done. And again, there's balance here, right? There's balance with, with almost everything. But what I am saying is that your kid's character development can be developed through academics. <laughs> and so again, it's not either or, it's both and. But life skills are so very important. Interpersonal skills, emotional intelligence, this is gonna be more important than ever before. I've been listening to so many podcasts on the future of work and how to uh, how young adults need to prepare for, for launching into this time of you know, societal disruption and this new unique world of work that we're going to be living in, that they are going to be living in, and what are the skills and tools that they need that are imperative. And number one is communication skills. Your kids need to know how to talk and write clearly so that other people understand what they're saying. This is the number one skill across the board, no matter what continent you're in, no matter what industry you're in, everybody is saying this. Your kids need communication skills. So listen, if you don't have a rock solid writing program, you need to get one. <laughs> if you need help finding one, call me. We have several at True North Home School Academy. That's what we do. Um, writing is our jam over there along with science and history and um, and math and foreign language. It's academics. That's our jam. So if you don't have a good writing program, you come to the right place. We can help place your kid in a really excellent writing program. They also need to know how to speak really well and, and be clear and confident communicators. Um, this whole idea of I'd rather die than stand up in front of a group of people. Listen, our kids are going to stand up in front of a group of people whether they want to or not because the world is online. And so whether they stand up physically in a room or they get online and interact with people, that is the way of the future. That is the way of now. <laughs> it's only going to increase. So your kids need to know how to write really well. What does it mean to communicate and write well? It means to be able to do it persuasively. Everybody is persuading everybody else. Okay, I have this soap I want you to buy. I have a belief I want you to buy. I have an educational pedagogy I want you to buy. I have a hair product I want you to buy. I have a football team I want you to buy into. That is effective communication is the art of persuasion. So if your kids can't persuade, if they want to go to um, go out to the dance on Friday, but you say no and they can't persuade you into thinking about their point of view, then you need to give them some skills, okay? So communication is the number one thing. Emotional intelligence is the, almost like the second across the board, of regardless of industries or content or anything. Um, your kids need to have some emotional intelligence, and that has to do with the executive functioning skills. It has to do with timing. It has to do with understanding the other po person's point of view, empathy, compassion. Um, it has to do with good boundaries. So if you guys don't have that nailed down, you need to find some. And if you need help getting resources, touch base with us. We've got a great um, we've got a great resource bank at True North Home School Academy, and um, go check some of the Facebook groups there as well. So life skills as well, how to balance a budget and do your tax 
taxes and keep your dishes clean and when to wash your sheets and how to keep your car working. All of these things are so important. They're all equally important. Academics should not take precedence over interpersonal skills, nor should that take precedence over life skills on and on. Okay, it should be triangulated and they should all have equal play because your kids need to support themselves, have fellowship, and take care of business. All those things have to interplay, right? As adults, we know that. So um, don't, don't put away the textbook um, for the sake of character. Do it together, do it both, integrate it in, because that is what we as adults do. We don't get to say, you know, I'm just, I'm just so stressed about my job, so I'm gonna put that away and work on my character. Uh, we have to work on our character while we're doing our job, so we need to give our kids those tools so that they can um, multitask <laughs> those sometimes um, needs that are pulling in different directions, right? Okay, so your kids need to have skills in a variety of different areas and it can all go together. Look, as homeschool moms and, and dads, we feel like we have to get it all done and it's so important. It's the most important work we'll ever do, right? Is educating our kids and raising our kids. Probably some of the most important work we're able to do. And it can feel overwhelming. It can feel like we're doing it on our own. But you don't have to go it alone. That's why Turner North Homeschool Academy exists. I literally, um, I worked for a third of the 30 years that we homeschooled. And I, I knew what my needs were as a homeschool parent with kids at home. I needed um, world-class experts, teachers that loved what they were doing and loved my kids. I did not want teachers who were fed up with the public school system and knew their stuff and just to get on there and go, you know, I, I really wish I didn't have to deal with students. Here's my stuff. I didn't want that. I wanted teachers who would come on and be excited to see my kids, have the subject material. Um, they were the textbook that they could share with my kids and be excited about it. And so that's what we've done at True North Home School Academy. Um, we have a curated resource bank of teachers who are from around the world and love the subject matter that they're teaching. They're experts in it. They love teaching. They've mastered the online platform and they love the students as well. And so um, that's what we've done at True North Home School Academy. We've also published a typical course of study because it's a great place to start because look, the whole point of junior high and high school is to give your kids a broad smorgasbord of, of information about different subjects that they're gonna run into in life. Biology, chemistry, how to write a persuasive essay, how to write a research paper. These are things that we're all gonna do. What is a timeline? When did Cleopatra live and was that at the same time period as Thomas Jefferson? Just a general understanding of the world at large. And you know, you're, some of our kids are gonna be experts when they're in high school, but generally not. So we do follow a typical course of study because it's a great outline, it's a great framework. But as homeschoolers, we know that you might not be typical. <laughs> our family cert certainly wasn't. We had a couple of doubly gifted kids, some kids with some more severe LDs and some kids who were really taking off in certain areas, um, some kids who wanted to work and travel. And so we took all that into account and we created a homeschool environment for our children. And that's what we have created at True North Homeschool Academy. We've created the best of it all. You can take one or two classes, choose a la carte classes from us, or you can choose a bundle, three to six class bundle for even greater savings. And we do give ongoing military and ministry discounts because look, our family served in the military and we appreciate those families who are making the sacrifice to serve and our family's been a ministry and we appreciate the sacrifice that your family is making to serve in that capacity too. So those are standing military ministry discounts. Um, and if you have been with us for years and years, you don't have to prove to me year after year that you're in the ministry or military, it counts. Okay, because again, we're so thankful for your service. Okay, you guys, that was a lot of information, but I hope it was helpful to you. I'd love to hear your feedback and go enroll today. Listen, our 24-25 classes are open for enrollment. And if you are looking for eighth, ninth, and 10th grade classes, those are the classes that fill fastest for us. So anything in science, English, and foreign language, particularly Spanish, fills fast. If you want certain days or times or sections of classes, don't delay order them today. And if you have any questions, of course, you can just shoot me a DM, leave a comment, head on over to the website at turnorthhomeschool.academy or jump onto one of our Facebook groups. I will talk to you soon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll talk to you later.